Hello, my friend. This is my daily chat. I'm Pat Sloan, and today is Wednesday, so that means Block Wednesday. And we're going to do a uh, our topic today because it's a tip. And today's tip is something that you can do uh, to improve your free motion quilting or even your walking foot quilting. Uh, and that is to use a panel. <clears throat> I talk about this in my book uh, because one of the things, it's lots and lots of tips in the book too, but let's talk about this one first. Um, <clears throat> the one thing that a lot of people stumble on for uh, free motion quilting is that you don't want to mess up your top. You know, you, you worked a lot of hours on this quilt or it's got a deadline and you just don't want to use it as, you know, something you might be practicing on or whatever. So to eliminate the uh, fear of miss messing up, you use a quilt panel because you didn't do any work and you have an image. So what's a quilt panel? Some of you might be new quilters, never had a quilt panel. So I will show you one that's a Christmas panel. And basically it is a, an image, you know, unlike patchwork that you would cut up, although you can cut these up, um, it is a full image. So often you can just take the panel, I'll pull it all the way back. There you go. It's got this gorgeous red uh, banner on the bottom. Beautiful, beautiful, shimmery. Uh, you could put a border on this, maybe a little inner border, and then an outer border, and then quilt it. So you've done really no work, but you have all of this imagery here to use for your, your practice. Uh, and then when you wash it, when you're done, it'll sort of tighten up the fibers and it'll eliminate you know, any little wonkiness that you had during your practice. I always advocate that you do, you get like five panels and you pretty much free motion, if you're doing free motion, you pretty much free motion one panel right after the other. Not one panel in January and one panel in, in November. You do one panel and then you do the next, the next, the next, right? One right after the other with just very little time in between. Maybe you spend 30 minutes a day uh, on, e uh, uh, on the panels. Once you finish one, then you start the next one for 30 minutes a day um, or you know, 15 minutes a day if that's all you can do. But you'll find that by the time you get to the end of the fifth panel, your mind memory motion for doing this has really clicked in. You know, it, it has to develop just like any athlete has to develop uh, a certain set of motions. You have to do that for free motion quilting. It's like when you learn to drive the first time you got in and you're trying to do all these things at once. Uh, if you can remember back when you learned to drive, you know, nobody gets in there and all these things perfectly align. You need time for your, your mind, your memory, and the motion of doing them to become more automatic. There's so many things you do in the car now that are automatic. You don't even tell yourself, I need to turn the key or I have to shift a gear. You just do it. You know, I have to, you know, it's, it's automatic. And that's what will happen with this. You'll get to the point where your hand motion and your foot pedal motion uh, will get in sync or even if you're running it on auto, you know, run on your sewing machine, you'll get in sync with that speed. Uh, all of that will happen. So that is your tip today. And while we're on panels, let me show you this one comes in some other colors. I have actually two of the colors. I've got also a blue, which is stunning. It also comes with some light backgrounds. So if you don't want a dark background tree, but look at the blue. Oh, look at that blue and silver. <gasps> look at the base, the bottom of that. They are just gorgeous. These are beautiful panels. So I link you up below to these. You can still get them. And then there's companion fabric on that page. So if you wanted to do a little border, uh, actually these are so pretty you could just quilt them and bind them you wouldn't even have to bother I don't think you'd have to bother with a border um, they make super cute gifts so you can practice your free motion and get a panel done <laughs> so there are some other big panels out there these guys are I'm just gonna show you the picture first and I'll hold one of them up what size are they they're ginormous they're uh, okay 64 by 57 so basically like the back of a quilt and then there's a Santa one too which is about the same size uh, and I'll show you how big that is these are fabulous they are on my list to do I think 
And there's a deer. There's one for the, the deer Christmas. Here's the snowman. See, now watch. Look. See, look how big he is. I just, I like things that are um, oversized, overscale. They just make me happy. Yeah. Ah, here he is, the jolly, the jolly, the jolly fella himself. Ta-da! Look how cute that is. Now, if you're doing a quilt, like for a lap quilt, you could design something that this could be the backing of it, or you could do it as just its own lap quilt itself, put a couple borders on it, that's totally uh, big enough for that. The Santa is the one that I want to do. Someday, I wanna create a Santa with some blocks uh, around it. Uh, when I was a kid, um, I went to go downstairs or went to look peek down the stairs when I was little and my parents had put a Santa on the door at the bottom of the staircase and I thought it was the real Santa. <laughs> so I was like forever remember thinking, oh, I saw the real Santa, except that he was still there in the morning. <laughs> okay, we have a block. We have a cozy, cozy block today and it is all about creating, the theme for the block is creating a cozy nook in your house. Ta-da! So here's the block. I am so excited about these fabrics. Actually, this particular block I would love to do with this balance of red, aqua, and black. I just think it turned out stunning. I just would do a whole quilt just with the colors done like this. You know, the aquas where the aquas are, reds, and then that little teeny pop of black. Now these are sew and flip blocks here. And I have a little tip for you at the website. So when you go to the website, you'll see that. And I use the design boards and pin into them. Um, so while you're doing this for your cozy nook, while you, what I want you to do, your assignment for your cozy nook is to this week, before we get to the next block, is to uh, find a spot in your house and figure out, first of all, what kind of a cozy spot do you want? Um, you might want a place to sit and read or relax. Maybe you don't have a good spot for that. Maybe it's you know right in the traffic zone of the rest of the family where you normally sit. Uh, maybe you want to sit, rearrange your furniture a little bit, make it in the corner. Um, I read about a, a crochet uh, designer who recently created a cozy nook uh, for her computer work in her bedroom because with her husband working at home and her children homeschooling right now during the pandemic, she lost her spot that she normally worked. And so she made got a little tiny desk and she was making it all cute and cozy in her living room. And that's Attic24 if you follow her, she's in the UK. Um, I thought that was really brilliant and just embodied what we need, uh, a place uh, that, you know, that's, that's cozy. It might be cozy for your whole family. Maybe you want to make a spot where all of your family can get together. Because remember, huga and being cozy is not an isolated, it's not about isolation. It's not about just you. It's about your friends and your family, which, of course, we now work in little bubbles. We, you know, not seeing all of everybody until the pandemic's over. But, uh, you know, maybe you want to play board games with your family and you don't have a good spot for that. So look around. How can you make a spot? How can you make a spot to leave a puzzle out? That might be a cozy thing for your family to do together. Maybe you've always wanted a fire pit. So you, you go and you order one and you get that built and put out in your yard. Um, one of the things I want to do uh, is create a cozy spot for potting plants because I used to pot plants and do garden, you know, indoor plants, outdoor plants. I used to do so much of that and I loved it. And uh, once I started this business and then we started doing so much travel, there was no way to really maintain the plants. Um, so it, I just sort of gave that up. And one of the things I always wanted was a dedicated area for potting the plants. So I want a cute little potting table that I can put, put stuff on. Uh, <clears throat> and I can actually put that on my front porch. Uh, in, my, in my home, I could put it on the front porch. I could put it in the back. Uh, like out my kitchen window there's a against the back of the garage door you know the garage rather that space would be a good spot or out on my deck out somewhere by my deck so i have places i can do it and i'm going to think about creating that potting shed it, probably not a whole building just a table potting table um, and you know you can buy those if you look around so who knows i might uh <laughs> 
I just buy one. Sometimes that's easier than having it built, but uh, who knows? It'll be, it'll be for probably the spring because I can't really do the kind of gardening I want right now. I can't like, you know, pull things and I still can't, I'm not supposed to lift anything too heavy. So I have to wait a little bit, but I'll plan it. That's what I'll be doing. So the block today, uh, I use directional prints. You can see on there, like, look look at this. Isn't that cute fabric? This is the, I, I link you to the fabric. In the middle are the milk bottles, and then there's part of a recipe down on the bottom corner. And then the text, I kept it all going the same direction. Uh, so that is your block. Um, super excited about this quilt. I'm working on the next set of blocks because I didn't make them all in advance. I only made those three in advance <laughs> to starting. So now I have to make another group of them. <laughs> and I'll be thinking about our next one for starting in January. So that is on my list too. Hope you enjoyed this tip. Let me know if you have you've worked with panels much. If you have tried my suggestion of doing five in a row. I know it seems like a weird number. Just why five? Because by that fifth one, you will see improvement. Um, and don't do five all in one day. The whole point is to stretch it out so that you build this mind memory over days, but not big gaps. Short, you know, like within a day or so of each other, you're just still uh, practicing it almost every day. All right, my friend, I love you. Thank you for using my links. I will see you online.